Good morning, everybody. Yeah, welcome to this interesting um, edition of our first mentorship session. Uh, it's a very good morning, and I hope to your mornings are very good. Can you confirm if you can hear me all? Good morning. I uh, welcome to our first session of the Theory of Mentorship Hub. I'm very excited to have you all. Um, please confirm if you can hear me. Yes, I am, sir. Good morning, sir. No, I uh, no, I want this this time. I want this time. So good morning. Um, welcome to our very first um theory of mentorship session. Um, uh, before we begin, we'd like to lay some decorum and in-house rule. Um, as you join the meeting, I expected to keep your mics mute so that you don't distract the session. Uh, if you have any question, you leave it to the presenter who's finished talking before we begin um, the question and answer session. The presenter will talk for for 20 minutes, after which we'll um, take another 20 minutes uh, for the question and answer. Then uh, I'll also give some contributions for maybe another 10 minutes and then we'll, we'll call it a day um as we wait for the presenter to join us um you're yeah, all welcome to the first edition of our stereo mentorship session we're going to have a talk on um the best practices in arm fattening for festivities uh as we all know uh ram fattening is a very important aspect of production um and it's very timely as we are approaching the the big salah or the idol adha um although it's a bit um too late to start now or can prepare for the next uh next session next year so that we'll be able to benefit from the innermost economic benefits of uh of the process. So um um Sadiq, if you are with us, I can't see your name from the list, but if you are with us, you can kindly indicate. Uh, and then we we'll, would we'll like you to introduce yourself, and then we can start the session. Okay, he's just joined us now. Oh, Sadiq, you're welcome. Can you hear me, Sadiq? Mute. Okay. Okay. Kindly join me in welcoming Sadiq Mohammed. He will uh, introduce himself and proceed with the presentation. Good morning, Sadiq. 
Good morning, sir, and good morning, gents. Uh, my name is Sadiq Mohammed, um, and I'm um, into livestock uh, production, both breeding, patterning, and uh, trading as well. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, um, thank you, sir. We would like a brief uh, introduction on your background. And since when you started uh, this business of livestock? I understand. Um, uh, I have a flying background. I went to flight school and uh, I'm a commercial pilot. But uh, ever, since I was, <clears throat> ever since I was a kid, I, I've always had a passion and uh, interest in, in animals. So I've always... Uh, Raised animals, so I've raised guinea pigs, pigeons, uh, uh, rabbits, and uh, as I grew older, I developed interest in in sheep. I went into sheep, goats, and uh, uh, cattle. So my my farm um, was born out of my um, love for for animals. That's why I started um, uh, livestock farming. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, mostly we have your your audience today are uh, mostly either um, fresh veterinarians or veterinary students, and then we also have um, a host of farmers that are either old time farmers or would be farmers so we we'll like you I understand yes we we'll like you in the next 20 minutes to to give us a um, an overview of the entire I understand. ram fattening process I understand. and then give them I some guides and advices so that if they want to start they will have a good uh, background information thank I understand. you very much so the floor is yours thank you sir Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, gents. Uh, so, uh, ram fattening or sheep fattening is just uh, described as the feeding of a highly nutritional feed to stimulate rapid growth and the fat deposition for targeted carcass growth at the shortest period of time. So, uh, I always tell people, people sometimes ask me to source animals for them for fattening. And I always tell them that the secret is getting the animals as fat as as quick as possible. There's no point of keeping it for a long, feeding it smaller rations and keeping the animals for a long period before you're able to sell. If you if you're able to fatten your animals between four to six months, it's better than keeping them for a whole year. Because when you do the calculations, you realize that you're not actually making any profit. It's just like you have a piggy bank where you're just putting in money every single day. So the secret is uh, getting them as fat as possible. And the first thing you do when selecting animals for, for, for fattening is you have to select animals with very good confirmation. There's no point of just buying any animal and those, those feeding it. You have to get animals that have good confirmation good depth of body, good length, good depth, even if it's lean. But when you look at the conformation, you look at the bone structure, you would know that uh, this animal has, has the potential to really get big. So that's, that's the first thing. Selection is number one, and obviously management is the second. So selecting animals with good genetics, with, with, uh, with uh, a genetic composition that would that would uh, with plus good management that would make the animal be very very big because if you fatten smaller animals the problem is you cannot compete with the open market the the guys that uh rare animals like the full animal guys that take animals around they they basically do not really spend any money on feed it's more of their effort and their time to carry them around so 
I always advise people not to buy small animals like young animals because it's not profitable. Buy large matured rams, uh, preferably Uda. The reason was we we have maybe five breeds, five to six breeds of sheep in Nigeria. The sixth one is a composite breed, but is I would recognize it. Number one is the West African dwarf sheep, which we have in the southern part of the country. The second is uh, the Enkasa, which you mostly found in North Central, some parts of Northwest and Northeast. They are very, very common. They are taller and bigger than the West African dwarf sheep and have a, a slightly longer tail than the West African dwarf sheep, even though most of them, the, the, the coat color is, is similar, but they are West African dwarf sheep. The third is uh, Uda, which is found as indigenous to Niger Republic and uh, some parts of the Northwest, Sokoto Axis, the border towns with Niger, and uh, the Northeast, the border towns with uh, Chad, Niger, like Yobe, Meduguri, uh, some parts of Adama, you do get. And uh, we've got the, the fourth, we've got the Balemi, which is uh, also found in the Northeast, close to Chad, and parts of, uh, it's also found in Niger and Chad, and then you find them in the border towns uh, between uh, Nigeria and Chad. Uh, and then the fifth, which is which was introduced into the country is the Sudanese breed. Uh, and then the sixth is the Koroji. So Koroji is basically a crossbreed of Uda and Balemi. So it's a synthetic breed. It's not actually a pure breed, but it's also recognized as a breed. So that's basically the that we found we find in the country. So I choose Uda or Koroji because number one, the West African dwarf sheep and the um, and the Enkasa are more efficient. They're efficient converters. Those animals have uh, all the breeds I've mentioned, but it is not as efficient as the Ankasa and the West African dwarf sheep. And also the Sudanese. The Sudanese are excellent converters and they have a lot of body fat. So um, if you keep a, an Uda, Balemi, and uh, Sudanese sheep on the same uh, formula, feed formula, you would realize that the Sudanese gain weight faster and easier and they're able to maintain weight better than these other breeds, these two breeds I mentioned. And they have also a lot of body fat and a lot of intramuscular fat. That's why when you're grilling, you are doing balangu or suya, actually the best because it has, a, it has a lot of body fat. So animals, carcass that has a lot of body fat will have very good intramuscular fat, which makes the meat more tender for grilling and also um, it gives it this flavor as well. That's why if you look at the people that make balangu, they prefer animals with a lot of fat because the meat is tasty and it's, it's less chewy. When you slaughter a, a, a skinny animal or a lean animal uh, and try to make suya with it, it's not enjoyable because the meat is only going to be chewy and, and uh, it won't have that flavor, that suya flavor you need. So that... Uh, that is one of the qualities of the Sudanese sheep. Unfortunately, the downside is people prefer horned animals for Legia. So that's why the Sudanese is not, the like the first time they came into the country, a lot of people were breeding them, a lot of people liked them because they were, they were new, they were exotic and all that. But unfortunately, uh, people, they are,
prefer not to buy them. Even though they still don't know, or even the people that know prefer to buy um, horned animals. So I wouldn't advise anybody to buy Sudanese rams to fatten for salah, to be honest. It's very difficult. Uh, you can breed them and sell to other people that are into them or want to keep them, but to fatten, to spend your money and purchase by for fattening purposes, I would not advise because uh, it's, they are very difficult to sell and they won't give you a good price. So the Uda is better for the, because of the market. So the Uda has a very large frame, is uh, is efficient, it's, 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 it's better than the, the, the Balemi, but not as good as the dimension, but it has a very good frame. So an animal is a mid game, weight is, the, is, is, is key. So an animal that has a big frame and gets fattened would fetch you more money than a small framed animal that is fat. That's just the truth. Uh -huh. So I would suggest Uda or Koroji. Koroji is also very, very good. Uh, it has not as good as the Uda uh, when it comes to feed efficiency, but it's equally good. It's better than the Balemi. The Balemi is the most expensive local breed we have or indigenous breed we have because of the eye appeal. They have a, a very, uh, large heads, the first thing you notice on an animal is an animal is the head. So they have these large heads with big round Roman noses and also the dewlap, the loose skin under the neck. Uh, so that it gives them this appealing uh, appearance. They are very good on the eyes. In white, they are mostly white. Um, they have white coats, so a lot of people are drawn to the balami. A balami would sometimes fetch you times two of what an uda would fetch you with, you know, even if, even even though they are the same size. So there, are, there's a lot of hobbies um, uh, in West Africa, like Senegal, Mali, uh, Niger. The problem is they take time to 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 build up muscle to develop muscle. You feed and they eat a lot. You feed and feed and you would only see the, the the progress is very very little. But when you get them fat, they will fetch you good. But I mean, so that is the uh, that is uh, the 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 pluses and the minuses of uh, fattening balami. And I would always recommend Uda because Uda would would give you um, a very a better return than this other uh, this other breeds. And one uh, good thing about um, is the. Uh, sheep or, 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 or find space, cramp them, 